So welcome back to the hot lap for our Austrian Grand Prix preview. We are looking at Red Bull. How fast are they going to be? Are they going to still be dominant? Spain suggested no. But the Austrian Grand Prix, the Red Bull ring, so to speak, has been a stronghold for Red Bull for most of the last few years. Albeit in 22, they had trouble with their tyres. Ergo, Spain, 2024. They had trouble, potentially, with their tyres, especially compared to McLaren. So, is Red Bull and Max Verstappen going to have it all their way in Austria? And before we get to that very, very question, one of the most important things is the timings. These are the UK timings, so if you're in Europe, add an hour. Um or wherever you are, um, add several hours potentially, or minus several hours, practice one, and we only have one practice session, is on the Friday, 11.30 to 12.30, with sprint qualifying that very afternoon at 15.30, at 14.30, just to a quarter, well, just shy of quarter past four. And then, that was Friday done, sprint in the morning, 11 to 12, with qualifying taking place at 3 to 4 in the afternoon, and the race taking place, lights out, away we go, as Crofty says, at 2 o'clock. But that is the timings, let's get into the track. Let's get into the track itself in a second, we'll be taking you a tour of the Red Bull Ring, it used to be called the A1 Ring, it was debuted, well, it's based on the old Austrian tank, but it was debuted in 1997. And even though Mika Hakkinen, I think, led the first lap pretty much, it was a Jacques Villeneuve victory. I think Coulthard did quite well there. And Damon Hill got nearly got points, but stolen by a comeback from Michael Schumacher. I think that was the first race. But it has provided some fairly entertaining races, let's say. So, let's now take a look at the Austrian Grand Prix track. If you bear, if you just bear with me, here we go. So we are on board. Let's um, we are on board. Let's get that. Um, let's get the let's get the track guide ready as well, as you can see there. So the Austria the Austrian Grand Prix. It has it's quite a short track. We are looking at a subpar. Let's be honest. It's going to be a subpar seventy second. Um, three D three DRS zones as well. Let's let's go, shall we? Brum brum brum, all the way in in Austria. So as we head down now, these are the going to be the last two corners. It essentially, turns at nine and at ten, and we very much need to get a good a good sending out of uh, out of that turn and all the way down the fast start finish straight in to turn one into the first DRSN. Yes, we do see passes here. You almost want to break a bit early. You do not want to mess this up. One of the longest straights we've got now all the way from turn one. It is a slight turn. They call it turn two, but it's pretty much a straight with the DRSN into turn three. There is where we see a lot of overtaking, hard braking, and then on the power, you can get a bit squirmish, especially when your tyres are having a bit of trouble. Into turn four, once again, a turn here where we see passing unless you're Alex Albon trying to go around the outside of someone then it goes horribly horrendously wrong so into turn five and and turn six um here we go turn six uh keep it nice and steady going into turn seven at this point now um we are looking at the you know getting into that final sector and what we want now going through to uh, turn well from turn eight into turns nine and ten is a really solid run to do it all again. A good 70, I think it's 70 plus times. We'll be looking at those stats in a second. But there we go. That is our lap of Austria. I hope you enjoyed it. So the, the three DRS zones, let's just check out those track stats, shall we? We've got those three DRS zones. It's 4.318 kilometers, seven Turn 71, no, that, that's round 71, please ignore that, but it does have 10 turns and 71 laps for the Grand Prix. Short laps, so yeah, you can kind of suggest it hasn't rained in the past year. I'm not even going to look at the weather forecast, because at the, at the time I'm recording this, it's still Tuesday. Yeah, and as we know, Spain was forecast at one point, what, Spain was 60% rain. Alas, the rain never came, did it? No, it, it, no, it very much didn't. So this is us going around the Austrian track. Let's, I mean, let, let's then have a look and let me tell you about some interesting stats 
seeing as we're going around it for the Austrian Grand Prix. Well, as I said, it was first visited in 1970. There's been 37 races held. The current track record is proper fast. A track record by Bottas on a 102.939 in 2020, but a lap record in 2020 of a 105.619 by Carlos Sainz. Um, I don't think, I don't expect for a second they're going to be that fast. Previously known as the Osterreich ring in 1970 to 1987 and the A1 ring in 97 to 2003. It's been held there 35 times as the 2020 and 21 Styrian Grand Prix um, during those 37 races. 24 different drivers have taken a victory at the circuit. Verstappen, though, has the most wins in Austria in the Red Bull, is king. Um... He has uh, taken five victories in Austria. Will he make a sixth? Alain Prost, Schumacher, Rosberg, Verstappen are the only drivers to have taken back-to-back -back victories. No driver has taken more than two, though, consecutive wins at the circuit. Uh, Max is on one, funny enough, because he didn't get that win in 2022. Four drivers on the grid have won a Grand Prix at the circuit, while Max Verstappen has taken five victories. We've got Bottas and Hamilton have each won two races each, and Leclerc, as I mentioned, Recorded that victory in 2022. British drivers have recorded more wins than any other nation. They've got a total of six wins. And the longest streak of different drivers at the Red Bull Ring came between 1970 and 77. Eight different drivers won in as many years. Two drivers have recorded Grand Slams. Joe Seifert did in 1971. And you'll be pleased to know Max of the Verstappen did so in 2021. No, not 2023. But McLaren, Mercedes, McLaren and Mercedes are the teams with the most victories at this track with it six apiece and Mercedes hold the record for the longest streak of wins at the track winning the Austrian Grand Prix four times between 2014 and 2017 so I I mean I mean that's pretty much the track guide there I do believe I'm I do believe I'm starting to um did I stutter a tiny bit so I'm just gonna um I'm just gonna stop the track there we go um hopefully that's a bit better so let's let's talk about the drivers shall we let's talk about the drivers and let's go in reverse championship order i've got the 2024 driver standings here who do you think is last i mean we did it for spain so we're going to do it again here who is last in the championship i give you one guess three two one are you right you probably were it's a logan sergeant um he was good in canada wasn't he spain no but the williams looked absolutely terrible in spain yeah he's not looking too great is it uh uh, we are probably witnessing the end of Logan Sargent's career, if not by the end of this year, at some point. There are rumours about Kimi taking that seat. Those rumours have died down somewhat, albeit with the FIA lowering the licence age to, uh, or the age you can enter Formula 1 from uh, 18 to 17, which I think is quite interesting. So from Logan Sargent, we have got everyone's favourite, the social media darling of 2024, Valtteri Bottas. He's in 20th. Once again, the kick sauber. They were on the cusp of scoring point potentially in Spain. He you do tend to have more incidents. So there wasn't one yellow flag in Spain. I doubt that will be the case in Austria. You do see a few engines go. I think Leclerc's went, didn't it? And I think even Sainz went um, a few a few years back. So I think if Valtteri can qualify as well as he did, as he did in Spain, points could be on the agenda. Next next up, though, is his teammate. Funny enough, his teammate is beating him in the point. Well, not in the points, because neither of them have scored points. Um, kicks down, but yet to score points. But Zhao's been quite disappointing this year, I think, compared to Bottas. And he really, he really, really does, I feel, need a kick up at the bottom for a good weekend. So fingers crossed. Fingers crossed for you, Zhao. Next up, um, with one point and 18th <coughs> in that championship is Kevin Magnussen. What is going to happen to him next year? I've no idea. Once again, um, Keenan Magnuson, I've just realised I've spelt it wrong. But yeah, Kevin needs a good weekend. He, I doubt, I think he'll be out qualified again by Hulkenberg. And are we seeing, like I said to Sergeant, are we seeing the end to Kevin Magnuson's career? I mean, I hope not. So... One team that didn't go very well, and I've already I've already briefly spoken about it, was Williams. And Alex Albon had a bit of a disastrous Spain weekend as well. Hopefully, Austria is a different type of circuit. Um, and I can only hope that the Williams goes better there. And if it does, I think if you can't if you can't get in Q3, hopefully he gets around that top ten in Q2 and 
with a tiny weeny bit of luck maybe i think williams can score some points but it's going to need to be an, an absolutely perfect weekend for alex albon to do that that's something that lando norris wasn't able to do in spain but more on that in a bit because 16th in the championship and on three points is possibly not alpine's favorite frenchman but it is esteban ocon yeah there's been talks that there's been has talks there's been lots of different talks hasn't there audi talks potentially for ocon um but a double point finish in spain things are looking up can uh, can alpine maintain that momentum fingers crossed so ocon is on three points but it's his it is his uh, it is his teammate pierre gasly who is who is beating Esteban Ocon. He's currently 15th on five points. Hopefully, more of the same. I just hope these two listen to each other. we got team orders, but Ocon knows he's out of the championship now, as in out of the team. Sorry, not the championship. So um, is he going to be listening to team orders if that does come up? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. So in 14th and with six points is... I think a lot of people's favourite Haas driver, um, for Haas anyway, because he's the man scoring the points, is Nico Hulkenberg. As we know, he's off to Audi. But I do. it wouldn't surprise me if he does just about get into Q3. He should get out of Q1. But I think a solid a solid race for, Hulk, for Hulkenberg with the very much potential of points. 13th is Oli Behrman, but we're not talking about that. But in 12th is Daniel Ricciardo. And he did better than Sonoda in Spain, which is good. This is another sprint weekend. He did good at the China sprint weekend, didn't he? I'm hoping for good things. This is a track that Ricardo knows quite well. However, he needs to he just needs to beat Sonoda. He needs to destroy Sonoda, I think, to, to keep that seat. Because you've got a very hungry Liam Lawson in the wings, licking his lips, rubbing his hands, wanting Danny Ricardo to see. He needs to continue to do good things. But the issue is that RB is slow. That RB has issues. So it's a bit of a concern, isn't it? Uh, the uh, RB is very much a concern. People suggested it more as more of a downgrade than an upgrade. I think maybe that's a bit cruel. Hopefully, well, I think we'll find out because Austria and Silverstone are, are two old, you know, old school but very different tracks. So I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping we find out um, how good that RB is and whether it's improved. And hopefully, hopefully it has. So just outside the top ten. Um, in the points um, is this man here, um, the uh, yes, the Canadian Lance of the Stroll. Uh, let's just hope he doesn't do anything silly this week <laughs> this weekend. And well, well, but to be fair to him, Aston Martin, even Alonso was struggling to get points in his home Grand Prix. So goodness knows what is happening with that team at the moment. Rumours that Adrian he might be signing for that team based on the Spain result, probably not. But to be fair, the other team he's meant to be signing, Ferrari, didn't do particularly well in Spain, considering considering where we thought they were going to do so yeah stroll uh, i i don't expect anything great i mean if i do i want i'd love Stroll to prove me wrong i would love him to do something great but i doubt it but you never know i like to be surprised so from lance stroll to yuki of the sonoda yep yuki sonoda of japan in the top 10 on 19 points in the championship once again having an absolutely cracking year showing ricardo the way for most of the race has ricardo turned a corner though he did okay in canada and he did it better than Sonoda in Spain. It, so I'm quite interested to see who's going to come out on top in Austria. i not a betting man. I really wouldn't want to know. So in ninth place on 41 points is the other Aston Martin driver of two-time world champion, Fernando Alonso. Interesting. I don't think I don't think he's ever won this race. It's going to be interesting once again to see where that Aston Martin is. And I think if Alonso struggles again... Probably Aston Martin have issues. He said they were having issues. Let's talk more, more doing. But I can't help but feel that since signing the papers at Aston Martin, it's something I spoke about in Spain. He's not been that fast. It's like Samson has had his hair cut. Yeah, I think you definitely need to sort it out. Definitely. So poor Alonso, but all the way in eighth. He's eighth in the championship. I mean, imagine. And he only got his first podium in Spain. It's Lewis Hamilton. I imagine that would have given him confidence. He did out-qualify George Russell. He did beat him in the race, albeit George Russell emphatically took the lead at the first corner in Spain. Hamilton knows his track well. He's won it. I wouldn't say it's his strongest track. He's been beaten by, by his teammates here when you look at both, you know, Rosberg and Bottas. However, he is, it's such a close track. He is capable of a good result. And 
once again, I if even if you think that George Russell have the edge in qualifying, I think overall in the race, it's Lewis Hamilton that has the edge. And this track may well favour Mercedes a bit more than Spain did. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. So from Lewis Hamilton in eighth to the guy that sits seventh in the championship, as I just get a drink. It's going to be George Russell. What a drive he did in Spain. Show, you know, guts and determination. Hopefully this weekend is, could Mercedes, like Canada, challenge for the win? I think they'll be close. I've got a feeling with, with their upgrades, etc. This track might suit them a bit better. And I think they'll be closer. I generally, I generally do. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna know really come the sprint race what they're gonna do for the race. Even though, yes, they can change their setup, which I think is a good thing for the race. But yeah, the sprint will tell us a lot and a lot about tire wear as well. So, the for me, one of the most disappointing people in Spain was Piastri. He was absolutely nowhere. It was just like, where has he gone? Okay, it wasn't the disaster that Sergio Perez was, but Piastri, where were you? When I needed a piastri, were you there? Were you there? When I needed a piastri, were you there? No, he wasn't. I think he will be a, a closer to Lando, but I still expect Lando to probably be a bit faster than him. But once again, we've gone from piastri good to piastri exceedingly average. We want piastri good for the race. Uh, come on, come on, piastri. So next up, we have in fifth on 111 points is the guy arguably with the first or second best car. Definitely the number two is Sergio Perez. He's had an absolute shocker. Monaco, Canada, no. Spain, exceedingly average. Yeah, and they signed him for two years. I mean, wow. He he really, the, the team has clearly put their faith into Perez. He needs to show, yep, yeah, this is the reason why you put your faith into me. And get into Q3 and get near the podium at least. Yeah. I mean, that's the issue. It's, a, it's, the, it's the same old story. What's going to be, what I think is going to be really interesting, though, is the story between the, I mean, you know, is the story between the two Ferrari drivers. Science currently fourth in the championship on 116 points. He started the season really well, currently been shown up by Charles Leclerc, and he had, when they had that little, both of them had that little to do at the first corner where Science damaged Leclerc and Fred had to play, you know, the, Middle guy, calm everything down. Um, don't, you know, put water over the fire. I'm not going to come up with any more. But yeah, so it's going to be really interesting on this circuit. Who is going to be who? Leclerc has one here, Science hasn't. So you, you'd like you'd like to think that the Monogast will have an advantage. I mean, he is on 148 points. He beat Science last time out. Science is 116. But I think this is such a close track with so with um. And the margins are so close, especially in qualifying. We've got two qualifying exceptions. I think anything can go. I kind of expect Leclerc to do better, but it's not. I would not bet the farm on it, though. Um, so these next two are going to be really are going to be interesting. Uh, I mean, you could have like Sainz beating him here, but then Leclerc beating him at Silverstone because I think Leclerc was faster at Silverstone, wasn't he? Um, especially in 2022 when Sainz did win, they kind of screwed Leclerc over, didn't they? But there we go. So, second in the championship. Can you believe it? Congratulations, Mr. Lando Norris, on 150 points. Okay, you're only second by two, but still, you're ahead of both Ferraris in a McLaren. Wow. We never would have thought at the beginning of the year. We never would have thought at the beginning of 2023 how far they have come. And now to say that Spain was a disappointment, despite them, despite Lando finishing second, he should have won. We want a... a uh, mistake-free race and a mistake-free qualifying. Lando, do your mistakes in practice by all means. Don't damage the car too much, though. And Lando does go well here. He had his first podium here. He got the fastest lap, I think, as well. Lando Norris. Can Lando get win number two? I think if you're looking at the moment for a favourite to beat Max Verstappen, Max has even come out and said, you know, he thinks Red Bull are not the fastest car now. So, Lando Norris, surely you are the man to beat Max Verstappen in the land of the Bulls on their home turf. Turf? 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 On their home turf. I really, I really hope so. And the one saving grace, I think, that McLaren has is, I mean, Lando said the Red Bull were faster in qualifying. I don't know if that's true. I think they were so close over that one lap. Um, and Lando was the better man on the day. But in the race, I do feel that McLaren had the edge, and it was the edge on looking after the tie something red bull is normally really good at and here 
The reason why Red Bull did not do well in 2022, they didn't get the setup exactly right, and their car was not good on the tyres, which is why Charles Leclerc won in 2022. So, is that same thing going to happen to Red Bull in 2024? 2023, they didn't have to push, did they? But now they are pushing. Max is making mistakes because we are when you're under pressure, naturally, there's a high chance of making mistakes. Lando made a mistake at the beginning of the race, which ultimately a lot of people suggested cost him the race. I guess we'll have to see. But Lando Norris, um, yeah, he's the favourite, I think, to unsert Verstappen. But he is going to have to unsert the king, the three-time potentially... Soon to be, soon to be at some point this season, I imagine, four-time world champion. But that's not guaranteed. I think as much as it was a few races ago. Yeah, I think Red Bull go in just about favourites. But a lot is going to depend on that practice session. They only got one practice session to get the car set up right. Red Bull normally do, but it's not a guarantee. They didn't get it right in 2022. Brazil 2022, they struggled as well on the car setup and a sprint weekend. It's uh, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? It's going to be, and Miami, Sprint Weekend, McLaren was the fastest car. So, it's, 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 I, yeah, I cannot, I absolutely, I absolutely cannot wait. I absolutely cannot wait for that. So, we have got Austria. It's go at the weekend. We will be doing, um, we'll be doing a review, albeit it'll be quite, um, I'm doing things, so it's going to be quite late in the day. I might not eat, I'll probably give a sprint and quality review. I don't know if I'll be able to do a sprint qualifying, but we'll see. But we'll see. We're de definitely like a sprint and quality review on Saturday, going into Sunday at some point. And then we'll obviously, Sunday night, Monday morning, we'll do our Austrian Grand Prix fallout um, and, and the race, etc. there. So if you liked what you see, please, please, please give us a subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you want to see more Formula One. Uh, if you do both, subscribe and hit that notification bell. You are an F1 world champion multiple world champion in our eyes enjoy it we've got more news coming well, i'm sure we'll be back tomorrow with more formula one news no doubts we'll speak to you soon